In this video, we look at an amalgam cavity preparation, a class two amalgam cavity preparation on a mandibular premolar. In this case, we'll be working on tooth number 29. This tooth is a little bit tricky because it's lingually inclined. So remember that your cavity preparation, the alignment of your burr should also be parallel to the long axis of the tooth structure. So your pulpal floor in this case, it'll be flat, but it'll be lingually inclined. And that can easily be achieved by tipping your burr so that it's parallel to the long axis of the tooth structure that you're preparing. So the first thing you want to do when you're preparing a cavity on a tooth is to first draw the outline. Even though you know it, drawing an outline helps when you're orienting your burr and also to keep an eye on how much you're extending your cavity as well. The first step is to start with the 330 burr. Use that to create a punch cut. A punch cut is pretty essential for especially amalgam cavity preparations because your amalgam cavity requires a minimum of 1.5 millimeters and your range is usually 1.5 to 2 millimeters and if you're a little short of 1.5 millimeters that just means that you are way too short it's not clinically acceptable and that becomes a critical error so make sure that you give this punch cut sinking your 330 burr all the way to its depth which is usually 1.5 millimeters now in this particular tooth we're using a 169 l carbide to extend this cavity on the occlusal surface all the way to the proximal box. And the reason we're using a 169 L burr is because it, ha it's, it has a smaller diameter and it gives you a better extension without making it too wide. And then you can switch to your 330 burr to bring it to the width that you're looking for. So now you can see that we've extended the occlusal part of the cavity. And then now you can switch back to your 330 burr, be very gentle and start widening it to the width of the 330 burr. Don't try to go too back and forth, which could possibly widen your cavity than what's required. Once you're done with that, you can start extending your cavity into the proximal box. In this case, we are preparing a meso-occlusal cavity preparation. So you can start extending it in that direction. Remember that the proximal clearance that we are looking for is very small. It's only 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters on the buckle and the lingual. And the way in which you can analyze this is by marking the tooth before you isolate the adjacent tooth. Because now that we have the matrix band, it's kind of hard to visualize where exactly the contact points are at. This is where your pencil mark comes in handy. So right now we're only trying to extend into the proximal box, making it even with the depth of the occlusal cavity preparation while also extending buccally and lingually. Since this is a relatively small tooth, you can use the 330 burr to start dropping your box gingerly. 
usually we switch to a 245 burr which has a greater length than the 330 burr but because your mandibular pre premolar is pretty small it's usually best to start with your 330 burr and if required switch to a 245 burr in this angle you'll see a small burn mark watch out for those burn marks at this stage it's okay but when you're finishing make sure that you know you remove all these burn marks so we're doing your chip of the wall that was there on the proximal side once you've chipped off that wall you've broken your gingival contact and at this point your only task is to break your buckle and your lingual contact the instrument that you can use to perform these moves is your enamel hatchet with plastic teeth you have to make sure that the hatchet that you're using is either brand new or it's sharp in the if if your instrument is blunt either it's not going to perform the move that you're trying to do or it could possibly chip the tooth structure off in a way that either the contact is too big or it's just too hard to recover so you're moving your instrument apically and then across your gingival wall to create a smooth finish the exit angles in your proximal box on both the buccal and lingual should be 90 degrees without any unsupported enamel left behind what do i mean when i say unsupported enamel you're just working on a plastic tooth so if you look at your cavity preparation you should not have any sudden turns in your tooth structure or a little acute bend at the proximal box it should be smooth and straight and 90 degrees and that means that you don't have any unsupported enamel left in your cavity preparation in this angle you can see how we're working on the buccal proximal wall and removing any unsupported enamel making sure that it's straight and also sharpening your line and point angles Play with your enamel hatchet and spend some quality time in your proximal box, sharpening those line angles and point angles, and even working on your axial wall to make sure that it is converging towards the occlusal surface and it's straight. Your enamel hatchet also has a cutting edge on the vertical component of it, which you can use to kind of straighten your axial wall as well. Now that you're done with your proximal box, go back to your 330 burr and place your reverse curve on the buckle aspect right at the entrance to the proximal box. The function of a reverse curve is to circumvent the cusp and preserve as much tooth structure as possible. 
and there you have it. Establishing the reverse curve is not a difficult step. You just have to remember where to place it. Your reverse curve is not in your proximal box. It's at the point before entry into the proximal box. And once you're done with that, you can switch to a slow speed handpiece, use a 330 burr and smoothen out your walls on the buckle, the lingual and the pulpal floor to make sure that your pulpal floor is flat and all your turns and curves are smooth. You can also take this time to define your ducktail area. Your ducktail should basically be parallel to the marginal ridge area adjacent to it. Once I'm done using my burr, I can go back to my enamel hatchet to make some final refinements in the proximal box. Sharpening my line and point angles and flattening out my gingival floor area. Now you can use your enamel hatchet to round off your axiopulpal line angle. You can see the instrument being used to round off that line angle. And it should be very deliberate and not something that you're just do using to run off on the wall. It should be very clear that you used an instrument to round off that line angle. This is really important in a patient as well to reduce stresses that go through an amalgam restorative material. Here's our final result. And that looks pretty good. Just like the class two amalgam cavity preparation should look with smooth flowing walls, your pulpal and your gingival wall flat, your exit angles at 90 degrees, buccal and lingual proximal clearance minimum 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters, your dovetail parallel to that adjacent marginal ridge and a rounded axiopulpal line angle.